When we log into 40SRA as admin, we have access to all the configuration. If we look under the Secrets menu, we can see Secrets and Targets, as well as Gateway. The Gateway area is used to create tunnels between 40SRA VMs or a 40SRA and a FortiGate. That way we can access protected secrets across that secure tunnel. Under Public Folder, you'll find Site A and Site B location folders, and this allows us to group together different secrets at these sites and then apply secret policies to control mandatory settings for those secrets. Under the Secret Settings menu, we have access to the secret policies. And here, if we examine this policy, we can see that we're blocking clipboard access and we're requiring for remote desktop network level authentication, and we are allowing administrative access. Here we could even assign checkout and approval. So this way we can force users to request access through a sponsor to be able to access the secret, and the sponsor must approve that, or even put that user through a multi-tiered sponsor approval where multiple sponsors have to approve it. Here are the tags that we talked about earlier that allow us to classify those different secrets. And here we can see some of the approval profiles and email templates that we can use to customize how a user contacts a sponsor to be able to request access. Down below, we have access to the antivirus and the data leak prevention profiles. And this controls how we scan files that are being sent into the secure file share and to make sure that we're not leaking any sensitive information outside of the protected system. Below that, under user management, we can start to integrate remote user stores such as LDAP or even SAML by leveraging 40 Authenticator or 40 Trust ID. We can even apply 40 tokens to add additional security and provide multi-factor for our login process. And here as administrators, we can actually monitor user activity and active sessions on the system. So now let's walk through creating a target and a secret. So under secret target, let's hit create. And here. We'll provide a name for the resource, in this case, HMI Workstation. Here we can apply a tag. and a template. So this tag is just used to group together like devices. For now we'll just call this other. And here we can provide the IP address of the protected system. We're going to leave gateway blank as we're not using a gateway for this example. Now that we have a target we can go ahead and create a corresponding secret. And we have to choose a folder for this secret so we'll choose site B. So this means that we'll inherit the permissions from site B. And here we can provide a name again. And here I'm just adding RDP to the name to indicate remote desktop protocol. Under target, we'll select the target we just created and we can inherit some of the template and other details. This is gonna be compatible for us since we're just using a simple one-to-one -one mapping between our target and our secret. If we had other types of secrets, uh, for example, if there was a, a web application running against this HMI workstation, we would create a different secret and we would create a different template or use a different template from the drop down below. So for now, we'll come in down here and we'll put in the username. And the password and this is actually our protected secret and so the user will never actually know this credential even though it will be entered for their behalf and now if we log in as contractor we can see that experience here we see there's much fewer mem uh, menus available for us to use we can only see the secrets and the targets and the public folders here and so let's take a look at that secret list and let's try to launch 
the secret we just created. Perfect. Now we have access to our protected resource all through the web browser. And here we can access any tools we need to on our HMI workstation Windows machine. If we had logged in using SAML, we could log in using um, our SAML provider, whether that's 40 Authenticator or Microsoft, and we could also use multi-factor in addition to this process. Um, in addition to that, we could also use sponsorship so that when this user logs in, they have to request sponsored access. So this launch secret button would actually be a request button, and then the request would be sent to a sponsor for approval. I hope you enjoy this demo. If you have any additional questions or if you'd like to know more about 40 SRA, please don't hesitate to reach out to your local Fortinet representatives. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks.